Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're continuing our study in verse 7 this lesson, but before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, we saw last lesson, the beginning of verse 7, he says here, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. And we saw that that statement, the spirit of fear is better, is better um, know or better to be interpreted as the state of mind that belongs to fear, the state of mind that belongs to fear. And we saw that uh, fear is the very first emotion that mankind uh, experienced after the fall, after the fall. The Bible says that when Adam and Eve fell and they sinned, that they hid from God because of fear. So therefore, it seems that fear is more than likely the most dominant emotion that we have, the most dominant feeling and therefore, it, it seems that fear is almost behind every, every emotion we have. Uh, maybe not everything that we do in our sinful nature, but fear is very dominant in our, in our souls, okay? So, but he says here in verse 7, God has not given us the state of mind that belongs to fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has given us the state of mind as a Christian through the word of God. He's given us the state of mind that belongs to power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, power here, the beginning of the Christian church started with the promise of being given power. And we see, see this in Luke chapter uh, 24 and verse 49, uh, Jesus said, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but stay ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with what? With power from on high. Stay here until you're, you're given power from on high. And then in Acts chapter one, verse eight, it says here, but you shall receive what? Power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. It was promised. Power was promised by Jesus himself. And the apostles exercised this power in their ministry. It says in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Acts chapter 4 verse 33 says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of, of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 20, it says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4 says, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit, with what? With the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? With the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, also, individual believers experience this power. In Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 6, and... Verse 8, Acts chapter 6, verse 8, whom, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, 
they laid their hands on them, right? And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. First Corinthians 2 verse 4 says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And of power, right? And 2 Corinthians chapter 12 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 and it says for we are glad for we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong and this this also we wish even your perfection so power from God is a gift that each Christian has access to in order to help fulfill God's call in their life so one of the God has given us the, not the state of mind of living in fear, but one of the things is the state of mind of having power, understanding that God has given us power to fulfill what He has called us to do, not to to live in fear. And if we live in fear, we're not going to be uh, fulfilling what God wants us to do. He's given us power to. Uh, teach Sunday school, right? He's given us power to uh, preach or teach or to minister to the to the elderly in the nursing home or the or uh, street ministry, um, homeless ministry, right? He's given us power to do that. Uh, power over our old sin nature that we don't have to uh, submit ourselves to the the sin which does so easily beset us. God's given us power, and with that power, he, we are able to fulfill the calling that God has put in our life, the calling that he's given to us, and he's equipped us with, with, the, with the things that we need to fulfill that calling. So God has given us power, and then it says love, right? And love here is agape. It's God's unconditional love. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18, perfect love casts out fear. And perfect here, the, the Greek word for perfect is teleos. And it means finished or complete. It means reaching to the end of something. So when God's love is complete, or when God's love is full in us, then there's, there's no room for fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And it's interesting that he says perfect love casts out fear. Why does he say fear? Right? Uh, because, again, fear is, is more than likely. Again, I, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist, but fear is more than likely the most dominant emotion that we have and it's and and fear i believe is is the foundation of a lot of things that that we do in our life we do them because of fear and, and god doesn't want us to live in fear god doesn't want us to do things out of fear but when we are full and complete in god's love for us that perfect love that complete love casts out fear. When our heart is full with love, it casts that fear out. The full and complete love that we are given by God is a love for others. A love that is available to the saved and to the unsaved. To friends and to enemies. And in Matthew chapter 5, and verse 46, if we only love those who love us, then what we what reward should we expect? Even the publicans do the same. So the love that God has given to us is not a love just for people who love us or like us or tell us, you know, tell us we did a good job and, and all these things. No, God's love is towards even the unsaved. And, and it, it, it goes to why? I mean, right? Before we were saved, God loved us, right? God loved us before we were 
we were saved and, and God loved us and, and ministered his life when we were enemies, right? While we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. So the love that God gives to us, this full, complete love, should be expressed not only just to your brothers and sisters in the Lord, but also to the unsaved, the the people at work that don't like you, right? And, and, and I know it's tough, but God has given us what? He's given us power to be able to love them, power to love. And we pray and seek God's heart for that. When we love with God's love, then we are ready to go through persecution, danger, and other hardships for the gospel, right? For the gospel. And also we can go through these things for other people too. It was love that Jesus laid down his life for his friends. No greater love has a man than that he laid down his life for his friends. And, and it was it's this agape love, this unconditional love which casts out fear that caused Jesus to go to the cross for us. And it's the same with us. It's this kind of love that, that, that he's, God has given to us that causes us to, to sacrifice our life for others. And then he says here, God has not given us the state of mind of fear, but of power and of love and also of a sound mind, a sound mind. Now, this Greek word for sound mind here is sophronismos, sophronismos. And this is the only time that this Greek word is used in the New Testament. And this Greek word sof sophronismos is broken down into from two words. It's sozo, which means to save, and then phren, which means the mind. So, sophronismos means the saving of the mind, or it means discipline. Or you could also say it means to have a sound mind, or self-control. As I said a few lessons ago, fear has the ability to cause a Christian to not think with God, or to think with his word, in situations of life. And that's that can be... That that's very easy for a Christian to enter into is when they start to fear. They begin to cast off God's thoughts, God's words, God's way. And they start functioning in their own human effort, their own human intellect to get out of that fear or to deal with the situation that's that's causing the fear. They 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 try to handle it themselves. They make decisions contrary to God's word and their effectiveness of the gospel is almost lost. But a great gift that God has given to us is, is the ability to be self-disciplined, right? To have self-control. Even in the face of persecution or in the face of hardships, the Christian can be in full control of his mind, staying true to God and to his word. So even, even it here's, you know, here's Stephen getting ready to be stoned. He wasn't, he wasn't shouting out in fear and no, he was completely in, in, in under God's, uh, God's, he had a sound mind and his, his mind was stayed on God. And so as we go through difficulties and as we go through hardships in this life as Christians, as we're out in this world, we can maintain a sound mind through God's word, stay true to prayer, stay true to God's, uh, God's heart in the situation. Don't allow the persecution, don't allow the, the, the difficult times to cause you to react in fear and to, to put God's word on the shelf or to, you know, stop praying anymore. I got to handle God. I'll be back later. I got a hard time here going on. Just wait, wait, wait a little while. You know, uh, I'm not going to be talking to you for a little while yet. I got to deal with the situation, right? <laughs> right. And that's kind of what we do. We're, we're put in a situation and, 
And then all of a sudden, God gets put on the shelf. And we want to handle it ourselves. Well, God said, no, I've given you the power and love and of a sound mind. Christians need to discipline their minds. You know, we train our minds in other areas of life. At work, at school, right? We, we memorize things. We train our mind. If you got a new job and that job required you to know a, a, a number of things, you'd have, to, you'd have to study those things, right? You're training your mind in order to function in that job. You have to memorize things. You have to know things, right? If you're using a computer uh, at one job and you switch jobs, well, they have a computer too. Well, you know, it's not, it's not that easy. Now this new job, they use their computer a whole different way. And you've got to learn how they do it. So you discipline your mind to learn those things. You discipline your mind to learn at school. And, and, and you, we memorize things, right? And it is even way, way more important to discipline our minds in the things of God. And I think God's word and God's heart gets put on the shelf. And, and I think as Christians, we, we say, oh, yeah, I, I know it's important for me to, you know, to learn these things at, at job or to memorize these things. And, and so that I can live here, you know, on the earth and, and work and things. And, but, you know, but when it comes to the things of God, it's like, well, I haven't got time tonight to, you know, to, to read the Bible or I haven't got time to, you know, my, my days are so busy. I get, you know, maybe I got a half an hour a week. I can study God's word, right? You know, it's, it should be, it should be the opposite. We should be spending more time. It's way, way more important for us to discipline our minds to the things of God, study his word, memorize his word, meditate upon his word. We need to find time. You need to find time. You need to do this. Uh, this is this is the things of God are are the absolute most important things in our life. More important than our work. More important than anything else. God is to be the focus and and the and 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 the target of our life of our hearts. Those Christians who do not take the word of God seriously are very worldly minded. And that's true. That's true. If you're not studying the word and if you're not memorizing the word and hiding the word in your heart, then what, it, what fills up your heart? Then it's the things of this world. You can always tell a Christian, you know, whether they're in the word or not, whether they've whether they're, they're, they, they take the word of God seriously or not. Because when you're around them, what do they speak mostly of? Is it the world? Is it, do, they, do, you, do you sense this love for things of the world? Or is there a, a love for God and his word and the, what God is doing in their life, right? The gospel is hindered in their life because of too much worldliness. The world is filling their hearts. They, they've made a decision that they're going to allow the world, more of the world in, and not so much of God and his word in, right? They're not going to spend a lot of time in prayer. Why? Because the things of this world are more tantalizing. They, they, they please the flesh more. They, they're more nicey-nice, right? And, 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 and be, so therefore, the world fills their heart. It is vital that every Christian discipline their mind toward prayer, toward the word of God, toward fellowship with other believers, and toward studying the word of God. How can a Christian teach others to live a godly life when they're not self-disciplined and they don't live a godly life themselves, right? Right? It, it is a gift from God and from the Holy Spirit that helps us to be self-disciplined. It's a gift from God. So God has not given us, again, given means a gift. God has not given us 
the spirit or the state of mind of living in fear. But God has gifted to us the state of mind that belongs to power, love, and of a sound mind. Sound mind. You know, Christians should be of a sound mind. Timothy could be a good leader of others because he is guided by the Holy Spirit and he's in control of himself. So this is what, I mean, how, how, do, how do we expect other people, young, young believers or you know, new Christians, or how, how do we expect them to follow us if we're not self-disciplined? How do we expect to be an example unto others if we're not living the life, if we don't take the word of God seriously? in our in our life right and so uh god's not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind all right we're going to get into verse 8 next lesson but until then walk with the lord i know he walks with you